गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी एंड वेलकम अगेन टू आवर कोर्स ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू मैकेनिकल माइक्रो मशीन इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव सीन सम ऑफ द जियोमेट्रिक एरर्स एंड हाउ दोज एरर्स विल इफेक्ट द परफॉर्मेंस और द क्वालिटी ऑफ द कंपोनेंट व्हिच वी आर मेकिंग बाय माइक्रो मशीनिंग ऑपरेशन एंड वी हैव सीन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एरर्स इन एक्स डिरेक्शन वाई डिरेक्शन एंड जेड डिरेक्शन एंड वी हैव सीन ए सिम्युलेशन और वन एनिमेशन where it is showing the different different type of errors in different direction according to the coordinate system so let us continue this topic further so we have seen in the last class about the x axis uh, error components when it is moving in the linear direction that is the x axis and we have found that one was the position error two was the straightness error one was the roll error and two are the tilt error and similar to that we have seen when you have attach one rotational axis around the uh, z axis then you can end up with some more errors in the same rotational motion so that are the two radial more errors one axial error one angular position error and the two tilt errors so now let us see the same thing for the y axis then how the error components are in different different direction in the y axis so first one is this one now you can see that it is moving but it is tilting around the z axis that is in uh, x axis so now if you see this thing so this is the coordinate system so this one is the y axis this one is the x axis and perpendicular to both that is in vertical this one is the z axis and your spindle is in this direction correct so now when it is moving so it is actually swinging in this direction correct so that swinging direction is actually the x direction where it is taking the center of that x axis and then it is moving so that is what it done the error in y axis but rotation around the x axis so y r x now coming to the next one so here it is in tilt motion in the y direction so now it is translation motion not sorry it is tilt motion now you can see again this white color and the red color what we need that for uniform motion we need this spacing same for all the things but if you see this red color then spacing is somewhere like this that it is acc uh, accumulated at one location then there is a off position and again there is a bunching of some more so you are not getting a uniform motion and because of that you are end up with more amount of forces and at the end your tool may be broken here uh, error in the y direction but it is around the rotation correct so this is the way it is moving so that rotation is happening along the y axis so if we plot the graph here so this one you consider x direction this one is the z direction and this one is the y direction so what is happening your tool is located here and this center point actually maintaining the center of this thing and then it is swiveling in this direction i have just transformed this thing a 90 degree so you can get the view from this side so what we are looking we are looking from this direction then you can get the idea let us see one more time so it is swinging in this to this direction correct now it is the y axis y direction and translation in the uh, x direction now you can see it is translating in this to this direction so that is in x direction if you see this thing so let us see so this we are looking from this direction 
So, this is z direction, this is x direction and this one is the y direction and you want to keep your spindle axis here only, but because of this particular error what is happening that your spindle is actually moving this side or this side. It is in translation only, but in the x direction. So, now let us see again want to, so it is moving in this direction. So, this is a translation error. So, here direction is y translation in the z axis. So, this spindle will move up and down now. Right. So, it is moving up and down. So, you are not able to get a uniform uh, width or the uniform length when you are doing a slot cutting or some type of other machining operation. So, your surface will not be a straight line. And now, this one is the motion in y axis, but rotation around the z axis. Correct. So, this is the rotation. So, this is what is happening. Now, we have to see from the top, then only it is visible. So, this one is the y axis, this one x, this one y and this one is the z axis and your spindle is located in this direction and then it is taking this particular center and then it is swinging in these two direction correct so these are the linear movement or the linear error component of the y axis motion now coming to z axis now earlier what we have seen two axes is, so those two axes are the planar axis so this one was the y axis this one was the x axis and now what we are talking we are talking about the z axis because now earlier whatever motion we have seen that mostly we give x and y motion to the workpiece motion to the workpiece and z motion that is mostly up and down motion and rotation to the tool so importance of z axis is also very very high that if you get some error it will be directly connected with the tool and here x and y is also same thing but it is also more connected with the workpiece material because we have giving motion in x y direction to the workpiece but mostly z into the tool direction so here our motion is in z direction uh, but rotation around the x axis. Now, you can see it is moving up and down, but it is uh, swinging around the x axis considering this particular thing. So, this one is your z direction and this one is your x direction and this one is your y. So, your spindle when it is moving up and down it is actually swinging that is not acceptable. Here motion in z direction and translation in the z direction. So, here we are getting that white color uh, mark. So, so, this mark will be different when you get this type of error. Now, you can see in this particular uh, red color the those are not uniform. So, we are not able to get a uniform motion in the depth wise when you are want to drill something or want to penetrate at your tool into the workpiece. Here it is the motion in z direction and rotation around the z direction. Right? So, this is rotating little bit in this axis. So, your tool is actually rotating, but it is also rotating around the this particular. So, it is some angular uh, displacement or angular error because of the uh, joint between the spindle and the tool. In this particular case motion in z direction, but uh, translation in x direction. So, it is moving in this direction. 
correct. So, your tool is actually moving in this direction when it is trying to go up and down. So, this is also one of the errors and here same thing, but in the y direction right. So, it is moving in this direction now. So, this movement is now in this direction, this is the y axis. So, your tool is in moving in this direction. Now, this one is the z axis motion, but rotation around the y axis. Right. So, this is the y axis and now it is swinging around the y axis. So, now it is this is the y uh, z axis and this is the y axis. So, your tool is swinging in this direction and that is the center point. So, it is the y axis. So, these are the different different error components in x, y and z direction. So, what is objective of learning this thing that when you do machining with such type of system where some error exists at the time you will always get some problem in the workpiece dimension or your tool will be broken. So, you have to take care of all this thing error you may not be able to remove this error completely, but at the end what you have to minimize in such a way that it will not create problem at the end use of the component. So, it should be within the tolerance limit or within the allowance limit. So, this is the summary of this all errors. So, what these things are telling? So, we have three axis that is x axis, y axis and z axis. So, how many errors are possible that is geometric error? So, first thing is that we will get a error x error that means your uniform motion you are not able to get that is error in x direction and translation in x direction. Similar to that we are getting the same thing in that that uniform motion along the y direction and same thing for the z direction correct. So, these are the three error in the translate translation in the same direction. Now, we continue translation and then see what things are there. Now, coming to when you are moving your slide in x direction, but you get some motion in the y direction also. So, that is called error movement in x direction, but error in y direction. So, this is the y direction that is parallel to this y axis. So, that is why it is showing this error. Now, in the same way your error in x direction when you are moving in y direction. So, this particular thing is this particular axis is parallel to the x axis. Same way for here that your movement in z direction, but it is you are getting error in the x direction. So, that is the x direction and this is the x direction. So, this is the three different category. Then third one is the movement in x direction, but you are getting error in the z direction. So, that is shown by this error. And here it is the same way that all the axes are showing in the z direction, but you are moving in the y direction and here also same way in this direction. So, this all 9 errors are the translation errors. Now, coming to the rotational error. So, you have one rotation around the x axis. So, we know that rotation of the x axis is called a axis, rotation of y axis is called b axis and rotation around z axis is called c axis. So, if you are rotating your object along that direction you may get one error because you are not able to rotate it uniformly that we have seen in the 6 error of the rotary component. So, it is also showing here this error similar to that we are getting the same error in the y direction and same error in the z direction. So, these are the rotary axis error along the same axis, but if you are getting a rotary error in one axis because of the presence of motion in the other axis then you are end up with two more errors. So, this is the moment rotary motion in x direction, but you are getting motion in the b, b is the y axis. So, this particular arrow it is along the y axis. Now, rotary motion around the x axis, but you are getting motion in the c axis and c axis is along the z axis. So, this particular arrow is moving along the z axis. 
same way for the y axis you are getting a error in the a direction that is in x direction. So, your arrow is pointed towards the x direction and this arrow is pointed towards the z direction because you are getting error in the c direction. Same way for here that you are getting a error in b direction, but your motion is in z direction. So, this arrow is parallel to the y axis this arrow is parallel to the x axis because you are getting a error in the a direction because of the rotation around z axis. So, now you can see that these are the number of errors 6 here, 6 here and 6 here. So, when you are this is for the 3 axis motion only 3 axis motion along with rotation correct. So, if you include more axis here then your system become more and more complex. So, now what you have to take care that we have to take care about perpendicularity that means orthogonal surfaces correct and then we, we have to also make sure that when they rotate at that time they should rotate along their own axis only no any type of under addition of the axis. So, these are the geometric error which we have to take uh, we have to consider during the fabrication of this axis of the machine. Now, we have seen that what type of configuration is required different type box type of there and we found that the milling type of the C construction type of machine was giving more stiffness and the more uh, load bearing capacity. Now, coming to which material we have to use for making this type of uh, machine tool construction. So, material selection is one of the key factors in determining the machine performance because if you are using a soft material and you will look about more about cost then what at the end you are actually getting some error or the permanent deformation in the machine tool. So, what should be the criteria for selection of this material that first is the temporal stability that machine should not actually get deformed because of this uh, static loading only specific stiffness because it should be. Uh, stiff enough to resist or counteract the forces which is acting because of the stationary body as well as in dynamic condition also. Homogeneity is important because when you are using one material it should be free from defects. Easy of manufacturing because we will see some of the uh, construction where you have to make a very very big casting out of that because you have to take care about the different different slots also you have to provide some type of ribs to reduce the weight. And finally, the cost because more the stable material more will be the cost and more it is difficult to process. So, at that time you have to also take care about this cost and manufacturing aspect when you are selecting any material for making a machine tool structure. What are the challenges here? Minimizing vibration when milling delicate and accurate part because we know that we are working with a micro machining or the micro components where our desktop cut is in micron level and we are going with a very very high speed and our tool should also rotate along its own axis without any very very high tool run out. So, when you are talking about this thing vibration is very very important issue here that is uh, uh, occurs because of the forces acting between the tool and workpiece. So, this vibration should not propagate towards the different component should not propagate into the machine structure correct and when we are talking about the fabricating of a delicate delicate means very very thin for thin wall section and accurate that means we need a dimension as per our requirement. So, these are the challenges when you are talking about this different type of materials. high damping will absorb more vibration during cutting. So, that is why we need a high damping uh, material while selecting of different different things. So, what are the materials which can be used? Metal is mostly used for conventional machining. If you see that conventional lathe machine, milling machine mostly cast iron are used. Then granite or different type of stones are also used. Ceramic is also preferable material. Polymer concrete is uh, upcoming material porous and reinforced the composite materials because we need a porosity because we want to reduce the total weight also 
and composite material that means it is not a completely a single material but you are actually mixing two different materials maybe the two polymer or maybe the different type of uh, metal matrix composite to reduce the weight and increase the total strain and some cases people go with the hybrid material that means you have to mix two different materials to get advantage of property from both the materials so there are hybrid materials available which will mix something like that they are putting a concrete is a different material polymer is the different material so you mix these both the things and you will get one type of hybrid material this is composite also considered as a one of the hybrid material because it compo it consists of two or more than two materials so that you can get the required property for a particular structure what are the properties of material you require for this thing so thermal and mechanical behavior is more important because we know that mechanical behavior is important because we are encountering forces and deformation and thermal behavior because temperature also play important role temperature effect during machining correct so these are the two more important criteria based on that we have to decide that which type of properties are important for making a uh, selecting a material for machine frame right so what are the material property young modulus is one of the properties then shear modulus bending and the tensile strain because we know that our we are in a different different type of machining operation so if you consider this thing that suppose this is our work piece now if you want to cut a slot here so this is the slot which you want to cut correct so what we are doing our tool is here this is the end mill cutter this is the machine slot correct so when you are penetrating this tool here at that time what happens this tool is going inside first correct so when you are putting this thing at that time you are putting a thrust force because right now we are not moving tool in the uh, to and fro direction or considering x and y direction so this force will be the thrust force and once you penetrate inside then what you do you do a movement in this direction so now thrust force action is over once it is reaching to a one particular depth and then you are going in this direction so then it is a bending force on the and thrust force on the tool correct so you have to also take care about this thing that how much is your structure is stiff because when your assembly is completely fixed that means it is in more stiff then whatever the thrust force or the bending force that will be propagated inside the structure and so your material selection should be such a way that it should have high bending and the tensile strength material damping that means when you cut the material at that time vibrations are there so this vibration should not propagate inside the structure because it should be damped within the permissible limit or permissible travel density is important because weight is also important lighter is the thing that is much better but it should also have enough strength so that it should not deform itself heat conductivity is important because when you, we know that we are uh, when you do machining at the time heat generated heat generation is uh, occur here this location and so that now where this heat will go that is a question because something will go to the tool something will go to workpiece and something will go to the chip so depending on heat conductivity heat will be absorbed within that material capacity is important that what is the uh, size of the component it can cover so if the size of the material is very very heat cap heat conductivity and capacity how much heat it can store that is related to the heat part not to the size of the component and thermal expansion coefficient that is also very important because we know that we are making a assembly of different different components this is one component this is second this is third one 
and all materials are different. So, this is material 1, this is material 2 and material 3 and all 3 have different different thermal coefficient. So, when there is a temperature difference because of the process or because of the environment what will happen this particular material will expand in a different different magnitude and that is the reason that your structure will also get skewed or get deformed even before you do machining because of the presence of variable temperature in the climate. So, dimension and cross section of the structural component because that is also important how you are making this particular thing we have seen in many cases that if the cross section is very very uh, fine because suppose you are making a solid component and you are making the same component, but a box type of structure. Correct. So, in that case actually you can reduce the total weight of the component, but still you get the same strength based on that. So, what should be the cross section of the different structural component? that will decide the total weight of this part and dimension is also important because if you are going with a hollow suction or something sometimes what you have to do the diamonds you have to make in such a way that you get a even of amount of strength here in this case. Right? So, they joining and integration into the force flow of the machining system. So, what, what does it mean that suppose you have two components here and this is the joint correct and if you are providing a force in this direction what is going to happen that this joint will not deform because of the force because this particular joint is perpendicular to this force direction this is the joint and this is the force direction correct. So, now whole component will move in this direction so no problem in that. But if this is the same thing and now consider forces in this direction. Now, what is going to happen that when you are giving a force in this direction at that time what will happen that this particular component there is a high chance that your joint will be in more problem because your stresses will be because this is a single material or the uh, without any type of joint. So, mostly failure will occur at this location because it will find the where is the weakest point. So, this is the joint is the weakest point of the two material joining and you are end up with this part. So, this is called the force flow that means if you are aligning your uh, joining or integration in the direction of the force then it should not be any problem. So, it may not create so much of problem and your component or particular assembly will stay for a longer time. But if there is a problem in this direction of the forces and the joint then you can not get this type of things which is very important here. So, you have to find out what are the location of joint and in which direction you have to integrate. So, you have to find out different different type of force flow when you do machining what type of force is occurs thrust force is there bending force is there and because of the vibration in which direction vibration will propagate. So, depending on that you have to provide joining and the integration of the different different components. Right. And foundation of the whole frame and the applied load because we know that whatever is the structure you whatever you are making on that if your foundation is not perfect then whole building will collapse correct. So, we always make the foundation very very firm so that it can bear more and more load on the top surface. So, foundation is very important so which material you are using for foundation and then you are building some uh, different components with a different material or maybe the same material. So, foundation of the wall frame is important that which type of frame you are using and then you have to think about how much is the loading is there because whatever is foundation on the foundation you are putting a base material and on the top of work piece is there and then all the thing will go as a load. So, these are called the static load. So, it should bear the this particular static load and your foundation should not deform because of that. So, now when you do machining operation at that time it will get under additional forces, but that not be so much high, but still this static load will be very very high and it may create a deformation 
in the foundation. So, these are the things about the material property and let me finish this lecture and we will continue this class further in the next part. Thank you very much.